Hi there, Roger Burnley, vocal coach here. I have a new video for you. Now, I've received a lot of questions about the whistle register and how to do it. Let me explain some basic techniques first so that you will understand this. First of all, not everyone can do what's called a whistle register, and that is when you're hearing these incredibly high notes that typically you're going to hear more women doing, and you know it becomes a great dynamic part of their song. But it's it, you know that it's even above what you would think of necessarily as even just singing in a falsetto sound. It's these really incredibly high notes, and you all can think of certain um, singers who have done that. One in particular who first started doing it was Minnie Ripperton. I had the opportunity to know Minnie Ripperton and when you look up the song Loving You, you will hear where she's doing that. She was one of the first people to start that made it popular in, in popular music that is. But basically I want to give you some understanding of how people are able to do this and again you may not be able to do it and what I've also experienced is people trying to get there and then wrecking their voices in the process. So that that's what we want to avoid. First of all, understanding that you're creating any kind of sound from your vocal cords or vocal folds. And when I'm, I want to emphasize the vocal folds because you'll get a better understanding of that because the folds are, 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 are something that you can think of it this way. This is not exactly medically, um, you know, sound things here, but I want you to understand it in the simplest way. Your cords are here, your vocal cords are here at your larynx or your voice box, right? So the way you create sound is that air is coming through and vibrating. Just think of it this way, vibrating around the chords. Now, when you're singing in your normal lower voice, your chords are going to be, you can think of thicker or longer. Then as you start to go higher, the chords will, you think of it this way, start to thin or shorten. You can actually think that they're kind of getting smaller and then the air is vibrating over a smaller portion of the chord. If you look inside a piano, you can see that the thinner, shorter string will create a higher pitch. That's what happens in your vocal cords as well. Now, understand this. Some people have incredible flexibility in their chords. Think of it as an athlete. Some people can do a split. You may not be able to do it, okay? But it is possible to do that. It's the same with the vocal cords. Some people are able to allow this kind of shortening or what we call damping of the vocal cords, getting to these incredibly high places, which means that the air is only vibrating over an incredibly tiny portion of the vocal cords to create a really high pitch. Now I'm going to show you something and something you can practice and go over to see if you will be able to start to hit what is called that whistle register or just generally speaking just higher notes in your own range. So what I'm going to do is do this exercise so you start to get a sense of how you're allowing the vocal cords to change. And then I'm going to add a couple of other things here, okay? So I'm going to start this one just on an A sound. A, 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 A. Now I'm doing this, I'm stopping there and doing this very deliberately because I want you to see that what I'm doing, I'm thinking, I'm letting go. A, and I'm allowing the vocal cords to get small, to hit that higher note, instead of trying to push up to get it. And this is what I meant when I said earlier that I've seen people really wreck their voices by trying to reach these notes by pushing up. That is what you don't want to do for a couple of reasons. One, what's going to happen is you're going to be pushing your larynx or your voice box out of place. When that happens, you're cutting off your air and the air is what we need to come through to be able to hit any kind of a sound, right? And so then the other thing that can start to happen is when 
you start to um, push up that way, you'll move your larynx out of place, that starts to happen, a lot of times you will start to use your swallowing muscles. You won't even be aware of it. That will cause you to even force it more. That can cause all kinds of other problems. So the other thing that you can do to make sure that you are not doing that is just place your thumb under here as you're doing this exercise to make sure that you're not getting to a place where you are using those swallowing muscles. So let me demonstrate again, and I'm gonna have my thumb here this time. And again, as I'm getting higher, I'm just trying to allow the cords to get thinner. So you can go over that and over that, and then again, it's a great idea to have your thumb here to make sure that you're not starting to engage those muscles. And then you will see how high you're able to get to see if you will be one of those people who's able to do that whistle register. So just play with it. It's not a big deal if you can't do it, and it's not necessarily something that we all want to do. And sometimes, you know, it may not work, it may not be appropriate for the music or the song that you're singing. But just to answer your questions, I wanted to give you this information. So practice this quite a bit. And even if you don't get the whistle register, just doing what we went through will help you with everything else in your technique. Alrighty, and I will see you real soon.